Hello, I'm Guru Santiago. Welcome to this series of videos on the Propeller Charlie board from Electronics is Fun. The Propeller Charlie is a new programmable DIY board based on the Parallax Propeller chip. It is compatible with the Propeller Platform board from Gadget Gangster and is capable of using any of the Propeller Platform adapter boards that are currently available. Additional propeller-based products will also be available soon from Electronics is Fun. To find more information on this and other products, please visit us at www.electronicsisfun.com. Now, let's get started. The heart of the Charlie board is the propeller microcontroller. The propeller is a multi-core chip that is very versatile and easy to understand. We will be taking a look at the propeller block diagram first to gain an understanding of the propeller's internal workings. Then we'll take a closer look at the functional blocks in more detail. In future installments, we will describe the layout of the propeller Charlie board and its IO connections in preparation for our first project. This is the propeller Charlie or the Charlie board. It is the first DIY propeller board from Electronics is Fun. It is designed to make building DIY projects simple. Furthermore, it is expandable with add-on boards that stack on top of the Charlie. We will visit the layout of the Charlie board in more detail in a later installment. Here we see the internal block diagram of the propeller chip. It's the heart of the Charlie board. Unlike most microcontrollers that contain a single processing core, the propeller has eight, shown here in the blue boxes labeled COG0 to COG7. These cores are identical and can operate simultaneously without interfering with each other. To the right of the COGS is the I.O. pin block in yellow. There are 32 I.O. pins available. They can be used by any of the COGS to control external devices and to read or write data to and from external devices. In the lower left is a picture of the chip in a 44 pin quad flat pack. The propeller chip on the Charlie board is in a 40 pin dip package that is functionally equivalent. The bottom center of the diagram shows the hub circuitry. It is a bit complex so we'll return to it a little bit later. The bottom right is a hub diagram that shows how each cog can access the resources of the hub, I.O. pins, and the system counter. As we stated earlier, the propeller chip consists of eight 32-bit cores, or cogs, 32 I.O. pins, and the hub. The COGS are RISC-like processing cores. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Most COG instructions are simple in that they perform only one function, usually in one or two clock cycles. A SIS core, or Complex Instruction Set Computer, on the other hand, has instructions that perform multiple tasks per instruction and require many clocks to complete execution. The I.O. pins are available to all COGS and can be accessed at any time with some restrictions. Each I.O. pin can be programmed as an input or an output. The signal levels on these pins are 0 volts for a low and 3.3 volts for a high. The hub is a mutually exclusive resource, meaning that only one cog can have access to the hub at any given time. This seems like it would create problems, but it doesn't because each cog gets its slice of time in a round-robin fashion where it has exclusive access to all the hub resources. The cogs are identical and can run simultaneously. Each cog can execute programs from a 2K block of private RAM, known as COG RAM, or from hub RAM. There are two 
32-bit programmable counters that can be programmed to any one of 32 different modes. These counters can be used for different purposes. For example, to time events, generate PWM or pulse width modulated signals, or to capture and count external events, just to name a few. A video generator is included in each cog. It can be programmed to generate NTSC or PAL composite signals or VGA compatible video. A font is available in the hub ROM to generate text and graphics. An I.O. direction register is provided for programming each of the pins. Additionally, a set of input and output registers is also provided to allow each of the pins to be read or written. The I.O. block consists of a set of drivers and receivers for the 32 I.O. pins. Any pin in this block can be programmed as an input or output. The registers described earlier can be programmed by any of the cogs to control any or all of the I.O. pins. Each pin can be independently programmed as an input or an output. It is important to note that the I.O. pins on the propeller are compatible with 3.3 volts signaling only. If signals greater than 3.3 volts are applied to any of the pins, the propeller can be permanently damaged. If a signal greater than 3.3 volts needs to be connected to the propeller pin, a level shifter circuit must be used to reduce the level of the signal. The hub is the most complex block in the diagram. We will discuss the hub in some details, but we recommend that those interested in learning more detail reference the propeller specification and the propeller manual. The hub is a mutually exclusive resource that also controls the timing of the propeller cogs. Each cog is only able to access the hub resources in its own slice of time, which is assigned by the hub starting with COG 0 and ending with COG 7. This cycle of time slicing will continue until the propeller is reset or powered down and is known as round robin. The clock is used to generate internal timings required to make the propeller operate. There are several sources for the clock in external crystal, an internal clock oscillator, and an internal RC clock. Additionally, a PLL or phase lock loop is provided to multiply the clock frequency. The Charlie board uses a 5 MHz crystal. Internally, this 5 MHz can be multiplied up to 16 times by the PLL to generate an internal clock as high as 80 MHz. The hub RAM is a block of 32K bytes of memory that contains program code and data. The program code can be machine language or byte code used by the spin interpreter. More on this later. The hub RAM contains the bootloader, the spin interpreter, the character set, and tables for sine, cosine, logs, and anti-logs. A set of control registers is provided for configuring internal resources such as enabling the PLL or internal oscillator, setting the clock mode, and the selection of a clock source. For more information about the Propeller Charlie board, visit the Charlie page on our website. The new Charlie board is now available on our online store. To get sample code and download other information, go to the download page. Additional Propeller resources are available at the Parallax website. In our next video, we will take a closer look at the Charlie board and learn about how to connect it to the computer. We will also discuss the different languages available for programming the propeller along with the programming environment. We'll also build our first project. Until next time, remember, electronics is fun.